Abraham had a role to play, the gospel today has a definite mandate to serve. God expects something of the gospel, praise the Lord Jesus, to impart the world, to change the world, to heal the world, to save the world. In as much as it is you that preaches it, are you hearing me? The success of it is not of you, it is of the Holy Ghost. The entire heaven is sure you can't fail them. Why? The Spirit of God looks at you and he's sure you can't fail to prophesy. Because he beholds the grace that labors. If he says you are an apostle, you understand what I'm saying? He's aligning your conscience to the working of his hand to guarantee the evidence that you are an apostle. So what do I do? What do I do? I rejoice in it. I take confidence in it. I become bold in it. God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for our hearers. Thank you, Lord, for the congregation that is tuning in this day. And we know, God, that even as your word comes forth, there is an illumination going on for the entrance of thine word giveth light. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you're very welcome again to the Faith Impartations program here at LTV. Praise the Lord Jesus. We cannot express our gratitude enough to God for the opportunity to be preaching here at LTV every Monday. Hallelujah. And uh, we know that the word of God is being spread all over. Hallelujah. And that does us good. Praise God. So, I want to conclude uh, something that I began with um, the, the Monday before our previous Monday. Praise God. Was still teaching on the essence of the teaching ministry and we're looking basically at the one which is taught that's the hearer or the student of the word and the one which teaches praise the Lord today we'll take a reading from the book of 2nd Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 1 the Bible says we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain and verse 2 says for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation have I succored thee behold now is the accepted time behold now is the day of salvation and now verse 3 that's where my interest is he says giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. He says, giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. Can I have the amplified version of verse 3? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The amplified version says in verse 3, Thank you, Holy Spirit. He says, we put no obstruction in anybody's way. He says, we give no offense in anything so that no fault may be found and our ministry blamed and discredited. So now we're not talking about the discrediting from men. We're talking about the discrediting from the realm of the spirits that place where your ministry 
cannot have the support of the Spirit. Why? Because you are an obstruction in the way of men. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Because you are an obstruction in the way of men. The word there, offense, is actually to be an obstruction in the way of men. And it's possible to be a minister of the word and not know or see how much of an offense or of an obstruction you are in the way of men. One time, one of those days, the early days while we uh, began these programs right here, I remember sharing a story of a man which went to be with the Lord, one of the esteemed fathers of the faith, Kenneth E. Hagin. He said in his book that every time he listened to his pastor, his death in the body seemed to be coming quicker because he was sick but he says one day as he committed himself to study the scriptures he realized that faith was a constant because in his denomination his pastor had taught and said healing does not exist anymore but then Kenneth E. Hagen, by the spirit of revelation, perceived that if faith was a constant, he said his pastor kept saying healing never existed anymore. But Kenneth says, but he never for one day had his pastor say that faith no longer exists. And Kenneth said, for as much as faith is a constant, then healing is guaranteed. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And he says that now when he committed himself to study the word, what seemed to have been a spiral that was tending to death became an ascendance to life. That is what the Bible means when he says we become an offense and put blame on ministry. The Amplified says you become an obstruction in the, in the way of men. And in so doing, fault and blame is placed on the ministry. The Lord says such ministries and ministers are discredited. They do not have the support of the Spirit. They do not have the blessing of the Spirit. Paul says if any other man preach any other gospel other than that which we have preached unto you he says let him be a cast the word there a cast means devoted to failure the spirit world is ready to fail men which stand as an obstruction in the way of men which are ready to experience god hallelujah Many times we blame the congregations for not <laughs> experiencing God a certain way. But have we also thought for a moment that could we be the obstruction in the way? Because in 2 Peter chapter 3 from verse 15 to 17, Paul Peter the Apostle acknowledges the episodes and the wisdom of Paul in his episodes. He says that unstable men and unlearned men wrestle with those and uh, bring destruction upon themselves he says it is men who do not have understanding he says those men are unlearned they are unstable in scripture they are unstable when it comes to truth he says those men they twist scripture to their own destruction. They are 
as they twist scripture as they say what the scripture has not said as they wrongly interpret scripture they destroy themselves and in so doing they destroy their hearers that is why in acts chapter 20 and verse 28 you cannot rightfully take care of the flock if you have not firstly taken care of your spirit as a man of god he says take heed unto thyself as of one which is considerate of the doctrine that you hear he says take heed what you hear and how you hear and then in verse 17 of the book of second peter peter says you therefore beloved seeing you know these things before he says beware lest you also being led away with the air of the wicked fall from your own steadfastness it's the interest of god that men experience him it's the desire of god that men are steadfast in the spirit God wants to credit your ministry. Sometimes when we think God is not moving on our behalf, God is not answering us, God is not, why isn't God doing this for my ministry like he's doing for the other? The question is, are you consistent with truth? Because there is a deliberate determination by heaven to devote such ministries to failure. But the opposite is true. If men are cast for preaching other things, then men are blessed, highly regarded, highly considered. You understand what I'm saying? Observed by the Spirit to ensure the success of their ministrations. At a time where Paul should have failed in Ephesus, he says he fought with beasts at Ephesus. He says at his defense, no man stood to defend him when he opened his mouth to speak. He says, Alexander the coppersmith did him much evil. He says, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. That was God crediting the ministry on Paul. He says, the Lord stood with me. That was God acting in the opposite of how he would have acted for the man which was preaching another message if men are cast for preaching another message this is what happens to men that preach the truth you can't preach the truth if you can't interpret truth you can't preach the truth if you can't understand scripture the right way he says the lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching of the gospel might be fully known and that all the gentiles might hear he says i was delivered out of the mouth of the lion that is not the testimony of ministers are cast that is a testimony of ministers that are credited not ministers that are discredited why because credited ministers in the spirit are ministers that do not stand in the way of men who are in the pursuit of God the pursuit to experience God hallelujah it should be evident before the world that men will know when you meet that man you get healed when you meet that man you will experience the spirit when you meet that man you will grow into hearing God when you meet that man something lights upon you that should be the testimony of men Let's go back to 2 Peter 3.17. Let's look at it in the message version. Hallelujah. The Bible says you in the message version. Message. Thank you Lord Jesus Christ. My God, my God. We give you praise. He says, but you friends, you are well warned. He says, be on guard. Lest you lose your footing and get swept off your feet. By these lawless and loose talking teachers, it's very possible to be righteous but be swept off from your feet and from and you lose your footing, not because you did evil, but for the reason that you sat under loose locked loose talking teachers, that you listened to loose talking sermons. 
young man young woman seek for truth seek for truth hallelujah and for the preacher seek to preach truth seek to teach truth same thing for the evangelist and for the apostle and the prophet and now let's talk about the approvals because you see he says they are discredited in the realm of the spirits they they do not qualify for support why there are no offense in the way of men and yet god has never intended to be an offense in the way of men he has given himself over to man for salvation not to be an offense to man but for the salvation of man and when you continue with second corinthians chapter 6 let's go to verse 4 praise the lord let's go to verse 4 he says but in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of god now this is how we approve ourselves this is how you approve your ministry this is how you approve yourself as a teacher he says in all things are proving ourselves as the ministers of god in much patience in afflictions in necessities in distresses he says in stripes in imprisonments in tumults in labors in watchings in fastings he says by pureness now that's i love the next by knowledge so your knowledge of the word is one of the pillars of approval in the spirit if you have knowledge in the word of god if you have understanding in the word he says i'll give you passes which will feed you knowledge and understanding if man of god if you have the knowledge to feed congregations with you are credited by the spirit you are approved by the spirit hallelujah and the bible says in second timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 he says by rightly dividing the word of truth to rightly divide the word of truth is to know the truth it's to know the scripture it's to have understanding in the scripture it's to rightly interpret the scripture he says by rightly dividing the word of truth you show yourself approved unto god this is god crediting you it doesn't really matter whether men credit us or not this it matters that god credits you when you know that god credits you there is a way with which you appear before men when you know that God approves you, there is a way with which you face situations. When you know that God approves you, there is a way with which you face blind eyes. There is a way with which you face lame men. There is a way with which you face cancer. Because you see, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 4, he says, we credit we put credit on our ministries or approval on our ministries and on ourselves by knowledge by knowledge by knowledge and it's not in proper order to excel at pureness long-suffering kindness love and faint you understand patience and not excel in the approval of knowledge because knowledge and understanding wisdom and knowledge is stability it is stability it's stability and strength isaiah 33 and 6 that's what he says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times and the strength of your salvation so you're not just saved but in the salvation you have strength so praise god hallelujah the Bible says it is not 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 18 he says it is not him he says for for it is not he that commendeth himself that is approved but whom the Lord commendeth that means when the Bible says study the word to show yourself approved unto God that means you are not approved before you are commended The commendation precedes that the, the approval that the approval is preceded by the commendation 
Hallelujah. But the, the approval is by knowledge. 2 Corinthians 10, 18 in the NLT says, when people commend themselves, it doesn't count for much. That's it. He says the important thing is for the Lord to commend them. That is what matters. Don't build your ministry because men commend you or because you commend yourself. Never carry satisfaction in a glory that is not rightfully earned. Yes, you have a big congregation. That doesn't count if you are not commended by God. He says the important thing is for the Lord to commend them. The approval is because we know the truth. Why does God then approve you? Because he knows you will not be an obstruction in the way of men. In fact, you become an negligible element in the salvation story of the world. God cannot do without you. He will do anything just to get you where you have to be. Why? Because instead of being an obstruction in the way of men, you foster the will of God to men. You become a portal, an open door. You become a divine window for men to experience the will of God. He says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, let's go to verse 5. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. He says, in stripes and in prison, yes, verse 6. Let's look at 6. He says, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love and faint. Verse 7. Now look at this. He says, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. He says, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet... Did you, did you hear him say, by the word of truth, we also approve our ministries? By knowledge and by the word of truth, we approve our ministries. So God looks at your knowledge in the word. He looks at how you relate with the word of truth to approve you but you are firstly commended, then approved. Verse 8. Verse 8 says, By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true. Verse 9. He, look at this. He says, As unknown and yet well known, as dying. He says, And behold, we live as chastened and not killed. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The Bible says something very powerful as, as I conclude. He says, therefore, seeing we have this ministry, yeah, as we have received mercy, he says, we faint not. In verse 2, he says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. In other words, instead of handling the word of God deceitfully, we have understanding of that word. We have the right interpretation of that word. And for such reasons, we do not walk in dishonesty. We are not crafty. We cannot handle the word of God deceitfully. Why? We have understanding in the word. We have the right interpretation for scripture. Look at that. He says, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Look at this, friends. The only way you can manifest the truth is when you do not handle the word of God fastly with deceit. To handle the word of God deceitfully means to deny yourself the place of manifesting the truth. And to deny yourself the place of manifesting the truth is the place where you deny yourself the the liberty of commending yourself to men's conscience. Remember, God first commends us because of our knowledge of the word. You understand? To approve us. The approval also is because we study the word. 
The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, 18, it is not he that commends himself that is approved. But then, is it possible to commend yourself? Yes. Yes. Only the one that God approves can commend himself. That's why 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, in, in verse 2, he says, it is in the sight of God that we commend ourselves. Let me tell you something. If God knows that I am deep, in his sight I can say it before you. If God knows that I am great, in his sight I can say it before you. It's now not a faith statement. No, I am commending myself in the sight of the one which approves me. Why? Because I am sure I am not an obstruction in the way of men. When men listen to me, they experience God. When men listen to me, they find God. When men listen to me, they find light. When men listen to me, they find life. I want to pray for you that is listening and you're saying, but man of God, how do I know the right man of God from, from the wrong one? How do I know the right message from the wrong one? Or a man of God that is saying, I need help. I was taught the wrong thing. I'm not sure whether I am fostering fellowship with God by reason of my pulpit or I am breaking it or frustrating the fellowship of men with God by reason of my pulpit. I pray for both fronts of God, both categories. I pray in the name of Jesus that your grace shall work in them to align them and position them to hear enough from the Spirit to receive the unction that patterns men after truth. God help our generation. God help our country. I give you praise in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We will see you again next Monday. Bye-bye.